All right, so let's build the lab timer. So first, make sure you do your heat inserts. Uh, I did this off camera, make it easy on you guys. You don't want to see me put them in, but you put your four heat inserts in, and then you go ahead and put the sticker they give you in the Velocitas Imperium pack. This sticker is going to be used. It has the buttons that you're going to use for the push button for the lap timer, which is similar to an actual race logic, which is pretty cool because on the PCB, it's very easy. You go ahead and take the 3D printed white buttons. Uh, you want to make them white because it's uh, a lot easier uh, to see or not see when you're putting them in. So I use some tweezers to align it on the back uh, because again, that's going to be what pushes onto the actual PCB. So as you can see, the red PCB is there. I'm getting the buttons aligned. But before we get to that part, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start working on the screen. Uh, the screen's got a USB. The new Impros are all USB-C. But before I do that, I made sure I took off the film, which I always forget to do. And I always tend to wipe it off just to make sure I don't get any smudges or fingerprints or anything on it like that, which you can wipe it out once it's inserted. But just to be better safe than sorry, I go ahead and wipe it off. The next thing you're going to grab is the screen holder. It's this little piece here. It fits in properly and quite easily. It just holds the screen in place so you don't have to use any hot glue or anything like that. Then you go ahead and insert the PCB. Very simple, very easy. Just align it back in. This is the four inch Vocor screen. So I printed the four inch profile or 3D print uh, profiles that they had so it would fit my screen properly. Uh, the actual Volcor that they recommend is a 4.3 for the regular size, which you will be able to be printed in CNC. Here, we're just putting down some self-tapping screws, so there's no heat inserts that have to go in for this part. This, again, is just your self-tapping screws. Once it's all screwed down, as you can see, it's very easy to just pop the back cover on, and it has a on and off switch, as well as just uses standard USB-C, so it makes your life even easier than having to do like my other uh, race logic box or 3d printed one where I had to actually use um, a GX 12 um, I could have used a USB C but it wouldn't have looked as nice nice and clean as this particular one so this one as you can see has a USB C right on the back all you're simply going to do is now just take those M3 screws and screw them right on in um, these are the countersunk hex screws uh, so it makes your life 10 times easier once you screw it in, it aligns right to the back. And like I said, because we put the screen holder down, the screen holder or the screen itself is not going to slide. Initially, I did not. And that led to a headache on my end. Once I flipped it over, the screen started moving. So that is essentially that. It is done. The buttons push quite easily. Again, I have it upside down. We flip it over. And as you'll note that once we get the lights on it, you'll see the LEDs behind it. But Simple, easy lap timer. He's actually created files now so that if you want to 3D print it with it saying lap timer at the bottom, that is going to be out. Let's take a look at what it looks like when you actually are running some laps and all the different screens you get to see. Now we've got it up and I am actually driving some laps. So currently I'm on an in lap. You can see the current lap information. You'll see it transition over as I cross the line. And the cool thing is that I really like about this lap timer and the reason why I opted to upgrade to this and I use my same original four inch screen is because as you can see the different screens you get, yes, you can tap it on the screen itself, but you have push buttons with LEDs behind it. The cool thing is these LEDs actually sync with a lot of other devices that I have and we'll go over that in a later video uh, from AT Sim, which is just really cool. Um, but again, you can see all of the different screens that are on here. These screens are actually from Pace Logic, who makes all of the different screens. It works perfectly with the lap timer. It is absolutely awesome. One thing you'll notice about some of the screens, though, what I have noticed is some telemetry, as you know, in iRacing is not output to anything. So you'll see some things like it says track name, which you can fix. You can see damage to the car, which again, from my understanding, iRacing doesn't share that damage outside of the sim. Um, you just know you have damage. Um, as we know, tire temps and tire wear, things like that, it does not share as well. Um, another screen for your fuel, which is absolutely useful, especially if you're doing endurance racing. Good to know if you don't have anything on your screen that you can see as an overlay. 
you'll see my last lap. And again, this just says collecting data because I've only run in one lap in this particular demo. So again, there's just a plethora of screens that you're gonna see here that you get to scroll through depending on what you're doing at any given time on the track. And it's just simply a push button away. You can, again, like I said, set it to work with an actual touchscreen function. But what's the fun in that? Why buy this? Why build this if you're not going to use it, you know, with the actual LEDs behind it? But again, that is completely optional and up to you. You can hit the stop button to go ahead and stop your estimated lap time and things like that. So there's so many functions that you can do once again. It is totally worth it. Let's get to the final words and I will see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in yet again. Thank you for supporting my channel. Thanks for looking at this lap timer by Velocitas Imperium. I'll point you to their website. Their website has a lot of cool products. I think this is one of their coolest, simplest, easiest ones to implement. Um, everything is much easier than the last one uh, that I built. And it has the cool feature of actually having push buttons and LEDs behind it. So for me, this so far has been my favorite small DIY project because, again, they have a PCB all done up for you. You print a few parts out, you connect your vocal screen, you pop it in, and you're done. And you get so much awesome feedback from it, as you guys saw. Like, it has so many different screens. I can recommend this easily. Again, you can get it, one, by becoming a Ko-Fi member on their actual uh, website. Become a Ko-Fi member in their Discord. You can see all of the different projects. You also get access to different chat rooms, like their Legends chat room, uh, where you can chat and learn about different things, get access to products that come out sooner rather than later, um, and be able to get many of these DIY files, as well as you know being able to know what's coming in the future. So support small channels, support DIY. I love it myself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, Turn notifications on and I will chat with you later. Peace.